Looks like Hangman toned down the asshole and revved up the yee-haw. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my quick review for Twisters. Sort of a sequel to the film from the 90s about these tornado chasers trying to do some things in terms of figuring out how to help combat Tornado. Saying it out loud already feels silly, but the more you watch this movie, the sillier it gets. First film was quite silly. It was fun. It also had a lot of really cool groundbreaking effects in that time. It also had some really kind of mind-bending sets and whatnot. If you look at the house that Bill Paxton's in at one point, the thing about the first film was it was hokey and it really came out at this really special time. And it has that sort of Independence Day sort of hokiness of disaster movies. You've got a cow flying, you've got Bill Pax and Ellen Hunt having this absolutely absurd love relationship, all the while them chasing tornadoes, and you got Philip Seymour Hoffman being this incredibly weird wackadoo dude, and you got that art in with really crazy tornado effects, Ellen Hunt having this fucking die-hard sort of vendetta against the tornado that killed her daddy to the point where you think it's the same one that appears at the end of the movie. So does this new film kind of delve into that silliness? In some ways it does. It does try to temper it a little bit. Obviously it ups it with some absurdity being Glenn Powell's character and the means in which they go about tornadoes. These hillbillies that just have the want to play God do these absurd things like drive into tornadoes, firing rockets and whatnot into tornadoes because that's what the YouTube request was. It really does capture the absurdity of YouTube and some people might say, well, that's ridiculous. Why would anyone do that? I point towards the person who derailed the train recently for YouTube views. Not saying that silly stuff like this hasn't happened, with tornadoes and such, but we are at an age where the absurdity is what gathers the algorithm. I thought that was actually kind of on point. The other stuff is a bit like, okay, and that has to do a lot with the tornadoes, the whole science bits, and that all comes down to Daisy Edgar Jones's character, who apparently has the sixth sense sort of kind of feel to her character about tornadoes. It does definitely feed into that silliness of the first film. You can just look at clouds and feel the moisture and dandelions will tell her where to go and she just knows that that tornado is the one that's gonna take her on this journey. She also has some PTSD having tried an experiment before and leading to the death of many of her friends, including that of, she's pulled back in as one of the other survivors from this group is like, hey, we've got this system that can help really track tornadoes. Do you want to come and help? He then proceeds to put her at the forefront of danger <laughs> with the first tornado they come to. And so we are dipping into that silliness. All while Glenn Powell is kind of being almost a predator. Anyone else was following her with the seemingly predatorily actions that he does to her in this movie? I think other people would raise their eyebrows, but because Glenn Powell, aside from the weird creepy following stuff, he's a wrangler who had uh, a past with both both bull wrangling as well as being a meteorologist and he always after that danger and that is one thing though that does lead a little bit into the movie is that I almost never felt danger for any of the characters even when there were scenes of pretty like oh no like you knew there were red shirts all around but the main characters you never felt any danger for but there's obviously a lot of homages towards it like there's one point where they're in a movie theater and Frankenstein is playing on the screen and as the He's like, it's alive, it's alive. The screen's being torn away by the tornado. Obviously a, a big reference to the Shining bit from the drive-in scene in the first one. I just never really felt that the tornadoes had as much woo as they did. Obviously they tried to do as much of it practically, and I'm, I'm just talking about the damage and everything and having wind, like, you know, big wind machines. And you can have those, like there are wind machines that can push wind at like 200 kilometers an hour. I've got to operate one once before and it was an amazing experience and that was on a smaller budget. I can only imagine how many machines they had for this one. You never really had this much interest in the characters. You more so had it in the fact that Glenn Powell was there with a cowboy hat. And as I said earlier, the science bit of it, you were going to roll your eyes into your fucking skull in the back of your head and all the way back around again. But it definitely has opened up a lot of people towards the interest in tornadoes again. And this is speaking from a kid who, when he was 10 years old and we would go to the video store, I would always go over to the documentary section and look for the tornado movies that were the tornado documentaries that were done by National Geographic and such. So now in an age where this is more 
available for anyone on YouTube. One big shout out to uh, Swelge Studios. I've been watching his channel for the last few months leading up to this movie. I really hope that him and other Tornado Chaser slash enthusiast a lot of traffic from this movie. But you should really look at it into it. it. Tornadoes are interesting. They're really, really cool. Very dangerous, of course. And that leads into my last complaint about the movie, is that they try to give this humanity factor to the film. Instead of going after the data, in some cases, they'd rather go into towns to help people. A lot of these counties and areas that are in tornado-heavy areas, they know what to do. They, a lot of them have shelters built into buildings. When you have people coming into a town who have never been in that town before, and telling people, hey, seek shelter here, aren't you kind of being a bit of a hindrance <laughs> to people? I don't know, I thought that part was a bit silly, the amount of times that it happened in the movie. That's just my issue with it. Overall, Twisters, I think, is a fun movie for those who like it, but it definitely doesn't have that long-lasting, silly appeal that the first one did, and that's really because Bill Paxton is in this movie, and neither is Helen Hunt for some reason. I think she just said no. They try to be as respectful and pay homage to the first film as much as they can, but there obviously are some aspects to it that just don't carry over the same way. I think that's because Twisters is really just a movie of its time. This one tried to capture on it, and it did pretty well so far from what I've seen from the box office, and it might lead to another one. It didn't really hit the same notes for me as the first one did, but I grew up with that movie. People from this generation now would re-watch that movie and think it's probably the dumbest shit ever. But in the end, my final rating for Twisters is a 3 out of 7. You'll enjoy it if you were a fan of the first one, but it won't last with you as much as the first one did. It's not to say that it's a bad movie, I just don't think it's a be-all end-all. I think it's okay, but I'm probably going to forget I saw it in a few days. But those are my thoughts. Very curious to see what you guys had to say. What do you think about it? What are your favorite Tornado Chaser channels out there? Do you have any recommendations yourself? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you all next time.